Welcome to Sad TV News. I am Alicia George. In our top stories, PRO of Fire Department says recruitment process too lengthy. Wreck found of Haiti thought to be Columbus's 500-year-old flagship. Hopes of survival dashed as body count rises in Turkey mine explosion. And in sports, sports division commences training for Windward Islands school games. Details of these will follow. The wheel of change is here at SAT. New and exciting rewards just for you. SAT customers, simply pay your bill and get the new Loyalty Plus plan for free. That's 26 channels absolutely free for a limited period. Yes, you heard me, free. And if you do pay your bill, you will have a chance to win big with SAT TV. Up to $15,000 in prices are up for grabs. 7-inch tablets, Blackberry smartphones, food vouchers and much, much more. Offer ends July 1st. Get more from SAT TV, the people's choice. SAT terms and conditions apply. Welcome back. For a number of years, the fire and ambulance services has been operating with inadequate staff. However, their concern about this issue may take some time before it can be addressed. In an exclusive interview with SAT TV, Wayne Leta, Public Relations Officer of the Fire and Ambulance Services, says this may be due to the lengthy recruitment process. Any fire officer answering that question would say yes. Would say yes. But it's a process that exists and it's according to protocols and we are operating under the Public Service Act and the process has to follow the public service but yes you would get the sentiment from both fire officers that yes we need persons and we are not getting persons as often as we would require but um, from an administrative point of view you know the authorities may tell you well the process has to go according to how the regulation states so it's not a matter of you want persons and you get persons but it has to go through the process who would like to see it ready kick up fast he noted there is currently a recruitment drive and they recently interviewed 80 individuals over a two-day process for selecting names to be reviewed he explained this involves doing background checks by the police force special branch to then draft a final list which then has to be submitted to cabinet for approval if we are talking about the the structure the fire department structure we so we are talking about maybe the need for basic would be in excess of 150 persons. Now when we look at our establishment presently we are, we are just at 117. Yes. And we are talking also, we have been talking in the past years and these are developments that the fire department is talking on and how we can improve. Over the past years we have been talking about the Melville Hall issue and the Melville Hall issue we are talking about it's have aerodrome firefighting and domestic firefighting done separately. So when you put all those things there together, we are talking about the fire department need. And like I, I, like we keep saying, and I said it to the media, uh, if we have to look, look at it theoretically and practically, we are talking maybe additional seven, 70 or so persons, 70 to 75 persons, if you are to go according to that plan. We would like to see at least 25 new recruits immediately, which would be a promising sign, seeing there are vacancies to fill right now, and the numbers are not what is expected, later stated. Plans are being developed for upgrading of both the Laplane and Casabruce fire stations, which are currently only operated as ambulance stations, he added. He pointed out that there are also administrative issues that need to be dealt with, but without the adequate personnel, it cannot be done. 2010 and 11 together we had just about 30 fire officers and these are to fill in vacancies. Presently we still have vacancies and the vacancies exist as of new positions created and also that of persons who retired from the department and so on. So we still have some of those vacancies to, to be filled in. The fire officer noted even with the large number of recent interviews, this is in no way a guarantee that new personnel will be added to the fire service this year but they will remain optimistic. Prime Minister and Minister for Finance, Foreign Affairs and Information Communication Telecommunications, the Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt, is heading a three-member delegation to the People's Republic of China. The delegation left the island on Tuesday, May 13, 2014, to engage in advanced discussions on the construction of an international airport and other development projects for Dominica. 
The Prime Minister on Monday, May 5th, announced that his government was actively pursuing several projects, including the construction of an international airport with a boot, build, own, operate and transfer option with a team of private developers from China. Mr. Skerritt is accompanied by Secretary to the Cabinet, Ambassador Steve Farrell, and Chairman of the Aid Bank, Martin Charles. Meanwhile, Minister for Information, Telecommunications and Constituency Empowerment, Honorable Ambrose George, is performing the functions of Head of Government in the absence of Prime Minister Skerritt. The Arawak House of Culture on Tuesday, May 13, was filled with invited guests and performers as the Dominica Institute for the Arts, DIFA, hosted its end-of-year closing ceremony. The event was organized in collaboration with the Division of Culture and the Ministry of Culture, Youth and Sports. Speaking at the event, Jacinta David, Acting Chief Cultural Officer, stated the closing ceremony marked a successful end to their 2014 training program and thanked the tutors for their service to the Institute. We are delighted about the fact that we were able to gain new skills in various areas of the arts, which were taught in the 2013 2014 academic year. It was basketball legend Michael Jordan who said, and I quote, refuse to quit. This is the only way your efforts can be realized, end of quote. Today, we celebrate the efforts of those participants who refuse to quit. You are determined to persist until you succeed. The extra rehearsals at home, the little repeated attempts at a dance sequence or musical notes, which added up to your accomplishments here today. She noted the arts are an essential part of public education, from dance and music to theater and the visual arts, giving children a unique way of expression, capturing their passions and emotions, and allowing them to explore new ideas, skills, subject matter, and cultures. They bring us joy in every aspect of our lives. Arts education not only enhances students' understanding of the world around them, but it also broadens their, respective, their perspective on traditional academics. The arts give us the creativity to express ourselves while challenging our intellect. The arts integrate life and learning for all students and are integral in the development of the whole person. The arts communicate and speak to us in ways that teach literacy and enhance our lives. David added that we must continue to find a place for the arts programs and partnerships, not only for what it teaches students about art, but what it teaches us all about the world we live in. During the event, there was a number of musical performances using instruments, including the guitar, keyboard, flute, drum kit, and still pan. Take a look at some of the performances. Following the performances, the participants of the program all received their certificate of completion presented to them by the Honorable Minister for Culture, Youth and Sports, Justin and Charles. When we return, more stories. The wheel of change is here at SAS. New and exciting rewards just for you. SAS customers, simply pay your bill and get the new Loyalty Plus plan for free. That's 26 channels absolutely free for a limited period. Yes, you heard me, free. And if you do pay your bill, you'll have a chance to win big with SAP TV. Up to $15,000 in prices are up for grabs. Seven inch tablets, Blackberry smartphones, food vouchers, and much, much more. Offer ends July 1st. Get more from SAP TV, the people's choice. SAP terms and conditions apply. Welcome back. 
The parents of students attending the Sinekou Primary School have displayed the true meaning of unity, deciding to keep their children at home after they assembled for an emergency Parent Teachers Association meeting on Tuesday, May 13, 2014. The decision was taken following a series of burglaries and acts of vandalism at the school, which some say has been ongoing for a lengthy period of time. A source well versed on the issue chose to remain anonymous, but stated enough is enough. An action had to be taken as they felt their concerns were falling on deaf ears. The louvers in each of the classrooms have been tampered with, while the louvers in grade 3 were actually removed from the classroom, the source stated. According to the individual, a letter was previously written to the Chief Education Officer, Melina Fontaine, about the reoccurring matter, which to date has not been resolved. We also have electrical problems, plumbing issues, in addition to toilets that are non-functional, Washrooms for teachers are unsanitary and drinking water is unhygienic, they revealed. There are security concerns at the school as the two security guards only work five days a week and based on the frequency of incidents at the school, security is needed seven days a week. Parents will continue to keep their children away from school until the Ministry of Education visits the school and resolves all of the issues affecting them. Efforts to contact the Chief Education Officer proved futile. SAT TV will provide an update on this matter as soon as more information becomes available. Mothers from the city of Roseau and Environs were made to feel special on Sunday, May 11th, when the Roseau Improvement Committee, RIC Inc., held its Mother's Day launch at the Harlem Plaza in Newtown. Now in its 26th year of service to the Roseau community, RIC has organized this Mother's Day launch every year for over 20 years. The day began with prayer and thanksgiving for the mothers, followed by welcome remarks by City Councillor and Senator Danny Lugay. The theme of this year's event was Loving Your Mother, which was attended by over 200 mothers. It was held under the patronage of Member of Parliament Norris Prevo, the founding patron and co-patrons Rosa City Councillor Danny Lugay, Rosa Businessman Joseph Isaac and Attorney at Law Joshua Francis. Leader of the United Workers Party Lennox Linton was also present at the event, interacting with the mothers. The mothers truly felt special as they were treated to a three-course meal, inclusive of appetizer, entree, and dessert, while listening to still pan music. The lunch was supported by over 15 businesses, including four financial institutions. The board of RIC Inc. expressed gratitude to volunteers, including the musicians and many sponsors for their valuable support, which went a long way in making this year's RIC Mother's Day lunch the great success that it was. And in court news... Twelve matters of a sexual nature will make the cause list in the May Criminal Assizes, which opened at the High Court in Roseau on Wednesday, May 14, 2014, just two weeks after the close of the January Criminal Assizes. Five of these matters were traversed from the January Criminal Assizes and will be given priority for hearing. During today's arraignment, one man pleaded guilty to having unlawful sexual connection and indecently assaulting a nine-year-old boy in a northern community between November 30th, 2012 and May 7th, 2013. A charge of buggery was also read to him, for which he pleaded not guilty, and that charge was withdrawn by the Director of Prosecution, Evelina Baptiste. A psychiatric evaluation and pre-sentence report has been ordered, and the accused will reappear in court on June 2nd, 2014 to be sentenced. Other sexual matters making up the list include incest, gross indecency, and unlawful sexual connection. Joanne Gage, Edgar Pelty, and Ara Davis, who were charged for money laundering, are still awaiting a decision by High Court Judge Justice Thomas to determine whether their matter will proceed to trial. Other matters on the cause list include theft, burglary, causing death by reckless driving, causing death by dangerous driving, and wounding with intent. A case of causing grievous bodily harm against Anthony Marshall will be the first matter for trial in this Assizes on May 19, 2014. Justice Bernie Stevenson will preside over the Assizes. The state is being represented by the DPP, assisted by State Attorney Fenelia Felix and Schumer Dalrymple. This has been the local segment of the news. Coming up next, regional highlights. 